Oh, am I starting? Yeah. Wow, okay. Um, what's up, guys? It's Brian Kalina, captain of Midwest Gaming, here with another Sky Striker deck profile, of course, because Ray's Bay. Um, we went to Denver this weekend, and I made top 16 of the Saturday uh, individual tournament. And then team uh, Midwest Gaming C team, me, Caleb. Let's go, baby. Joe. What's up? Well, we made it to the finals of the 3v3, and we lost uh, because I gave my teammate bad advice, and he listened to me. Um, uh, turns out, if I'm not playing Sky Striker, I shouldn't be trusted. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, overall, like uh, other than that, successful weekend. Uh, uh, this deck's insane. If you're not playing the bird deck, you're not losing. Uh, so let's get into it. We got the uh, the standard three rate, two rows. Kyle Satter, Ryan Michael Hansen. Get out of here. Two rows, not three. Um, we're blind in second, so uh, one isn't enough to see a starter. And actually, this ratio might be okay now that we're playing DP uh, because if you get to the fusion destiny and your celestial draw two, you're just like surviving longer. Uh, to get to your starters, so um, one rose might actually be okay, but the two really worked all weekend. Um, three's too many, you're gonna just break on too many starters sometimes and you're gonna lose when you can't do anything else. Um, so. There you go. Uh, and this is the Saturday list, I should clarify. I did change a little bit of things from Saturday to the 3v3, but on Saturday we played Nibiru uh, and Ash and then Celestial and Dasher. Uh, Nibiru was okay on Saturday. Every time I like resolved it, it was amazing, of course, but it got stuck in my hand a lot with these two. Uh, so like there were times, and I don't know that any of them really cost me the match, uh, or it might have cost me a game, but um, they just, uh, if this gets stuck in your hand when you have these two, you can't like dig. And if you're in a simplified game site, that kind of like hurts you depending on what you're playing against. So um, this is one of the changes I made going into Sunday. But like, for the most part, Nibiru is just really good. So I liked it. What'd you change Nibiru for? I changed Nibiru's for effect veilers because effect veilers are much less dead in the hand um, mid and late game because. Usually when the Nibirus are dead, it's because they're not summoning five times, not because they're not summoning at all. Uh, so, and Veilers are normal summonable. Uh, so if I have to like make a link to Phoenix or Zeke, uh, whatever. Sometimes summoning this, making a Zeke, drawing two is just better than having a dead Nibiru when they're never going to summon five times again for the rest of the game. Um, I actually had to Unicorn discard a Nibiru just to get these two to draw two to like further myself in the game to have a shot at winning once uh, on Saturday. So uh, on Sunday we swapped it for these and it was good. Baylor's good. Sword Soul is a deck that Baylor and Imperm really perform against. So uh, I liked this change a lot. Well, yeah, that was the monster lineup. For the trap lineup, only three uh, Imperm hand traps. This card's insane. Uh, I'm a big fan. I uh, beat a PK player because he went to battle phase because his out to mine was his second to last card, uh, his Imperial Order. So he went to battle phase to try and kill me and I imperm his access code so it lost attack so then he just couldn't draw for turn next turn. Um, um, and it just like outs floodgates if you like set it and hit their monsters. It hurts Sword Soul a lot. There's, there's so much utility for Sky and because of anti-spell Imperial Order, like even if it's not necessarily good against the engine, I almost never take this card out. Uh, because it just lets you play the game uh, when you can turn off floodgates for a turn. But now we're on the spells for Saturday. We played best card in the game. Engage, multi-roll, uh, Hornet Drones, the big three uh, that I can only play one of and I wish I could play more of each of these, but I can't. Um, the other one of I played are Burners and Ego Booster. So uh, if you've seen any of my prior deck profiles, I've been two, on two of these. Um, and I was almost still on two of this, uh, but I'm not playing Desires anymore. So one and one worked um, for me all weekend. And it was great. Uh, still two Shark Cannon. Uh, three's not great right now, uh, but one isn't either just because um, it outs DPE. Uh, so, like. Phoenix Enforcer is such a popular card right now, and it absolutely sucks against Sky because Sky outs it so easily. 
it's pretty wild. Uh, so that's actually one of the other reasons I decided to go with Sky for the events. Just because uh, I just, every time I played Sword Soul, if I got Imperm or Valor uh, and couldn't get to a token or something, I just lost. And um, it, was just, it was so fragile for me, the Sword Soul deck. Uh, I don't know how Caleb swept the way he did in the 3v3. This man won, won every single match until the finals. Um, with his Sword Soul deck, and he's insane. But uh, three Widow Anchor, and then one Airspace, and one Terraforming. Uh, we played the Terraforming because uh, we also played two Sky Striker Mecha Mystic Mines. Um, so I actually like hated this card on Saturday. Um, everybody had a main deck out to it. Uh, except for my final round opponent um, that I beat to get into top 16. Uh, so I guess that was okay, but it's just, I don't know, it's really hard to like play well with this card because it's so easy for your opponent to bluff that they have an out, and then you just feel like you're forced to play, and it just feels so bad putting them on, oh, better have the out, and then they do, and then they OTK you and you lose. Uh, it's just like, oh, shit. Where, like, if you had played sooner, you might have been able to win anyway. So, like, finding the balance between stalling them to deck out and then, like, actually playing is so difficult, I think, that... Uh, also, this card's just toxic. But um, Sunday, to, uh, for the 3v3, it worked a lot better. Um, it was pretty insane. I feel like I was either able to... My opponent's either scooped right away or I was able to balance, like, using this and playing and just still winning anyway. Um... That was okay. And then for the rest of the non-striker spells, on Saturday we used three droplets, three prosperity. Card's good. Uh, unless you banish Verte Anaconda off of it. Got Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, we won our top eight match for the 3v3 because when... Uh, that was Swiss. Was that Swiss? Oh, yeah. oh it was Swiss. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we won... Uh, the team we beat in top eight, we beat in Swiss... Because in game three, when Caleb had won and Joe had lost, my opponent uh, banished Verte off of this. And then in a game state where he had anti spell, he couldn't make DPE to clear my four back row, and I had roll engage. So the next turn, I just popped off and I made my own DPE because I engaged for a monster roll. I had searched the field spell because I had the roll, so I set the field spell, rolled it away, DPE, popped the anti spell. I just went crazy. Um, all because he banishes Verte off of Prosperity. I was like, I'm sick. Thank you for the win. Um, but they still made top eight, so that's cool. But then we beat them in top eight, too. So. <laughs> um, three Fusion Destiny and one Upstart. Um, on Saturday, this combo never gave me any trouble. It literally, like, I just, it was never a problem. But then afterward, I was like, why am I playing Upstart when I have Prosperities? Because... I just hate cards that, like, you can't use all in the turn. Like, in Sky, especially when you're blinding second, like, you need everything, you need every resource possible to play the game. So, um, things like drawing, engage, drawing prosperity off the engage hurts, but, like, if you're resolving engage with three spells, like, you're just in a good spot where that doesn't matter. But, like, drawing these two cards together, I don't know. I just would rather not. So it didn't cause me any issues Saturday, but I did take out Upstart uh, for Raigeki because the bird deck is scary as hell. I didn't play any birds on Sunday, which was cool, but uh, this was in my main deck for Sunday. So the differences were um, these four cards came in for these four cards. Uh, so Saturday, Sunday. Um, Saturday I went... Six and two, seven and two in Swiss, got top 16, lost to Birds in top 16. Uh, Sunday, we went six and oh in Swiss and then lost in the finals because we won top eight, won top four. I went four and two in Swiss and then I won top eight, top four in finals. Um, and so I went, what, six, seven, eight, nine. So I went seven and two again on Sunday. Uh, insane. Sky's insane. I love it. Uh, let's go to, extra deck didn't change, uh, and extra deck might 
be flexible. I'm not really sure. So we played three Kagari, two Shizuku, call me crazy, um, three Hayate, one Kaina, one Zeke. So my argument was that if I don't see prosperity, I want to be able to summon three Hayates in a game uh, because... Uh, it just like nets you same turn advantage, and I think uh, especially if you're going like mid and late game, uh, well, I guess like early game, I guess early game, uh, it's just sometimes so important to be able to dump a ray right away, um, and then still have Hayates to poke later. Uh, so like having three of these versus having three of these when sometimes the third Shizuku can't search anything because you're in a game state where all your striker spells are used and, or in the graveyard. Um, I just decided to do two Shiz, three Hayate, and if I needed to banish one off Prosperity, it'd be this because two Hayates is not the worst thing in the world. But um, And it worked. It worked all weekend. I did not miss the third Shizuku at all. Um, I'm really happy that I decided on this ratio because it was insane. Uh, I just didn't need the third Shiz, and I think it was absolutely correct if I was going to cut one to cut the shiz. So, 10 striker links. Uh, Verte, DPE, of course. Um, and then for the three flex spots, instead of doing Halk Selene access code, I did Phoenix Unicorn access code. Just because, like, Halk and Selene don't actually do anything. Um, and for a while, I wasn't playing Valor, so they just were out. Uh, but access code is still important to have because shark cannon is insane you can just summon their link twos link threes and it's still easily makeable without halk selene and then i wanted board breakers uh to be able to try and like out floodgates so i just like the two nightmares um every time i resolved pot i almost ba always banished both of these um usually at least one um so i guess i'm not really sure if there are better spots uh, some people think the link five is Good. I'm not sold on it yet, but that may change. Um, but this is the extra deck I played for both days, and it was just good. I wouldn't change it. Um, I don't think in the near future, at the very least. Uh, side deck for Saturday um, was two Dark Ruler, three Cosmic, uh, Sanctum Package with Scythe, Evenlies, and there can be only one. Um... All these cards are really good. The problem I found with Dark Ruler is that I would Dark Ruler their board, and then their board would still exist after my turn was over because I'm playing Sky Striker. So like, if I don't have a way to get to DPE, then like it's hard to pick apart boards. So I didn't love this card. This card, I don't know. I just wanted Chainables. So for Evenly, I just decided that even though this was such a good card, uh, Chainables to... Uh, the floodgates and I smell an order because my only loss on Saturday to something that wasn't bird was to sword soul that opened IO game one and I spell game three so like if I don't see the chainables yeah it's really hard to play around um, so for Sunday we took out these five cards and if you recall I took out the Nibiru's from the main deck for Valors so the Nibiru's moved to the side deck. And then the last two spots were twins. So I just added the two twins uh, for chainables to uh, the floods. And then sided the Nibiru's because I still think they're really good. Especially since so many people think PK is a good deck. I, I don't know, man. Um, so... <laughs> They're all looking at me because until like three days ago, I was going to play PK for the scene. <laughs> and then I decided that PK wasn't the wave. Uh, so yeah, that's the deck with the changes from Saturday to Sunday. Uh, Sky's insane. I think people are sleeping on it. Um, it's really good. Shout outs to... And I have to shout him out, even though he never gives me... Uh, that's not true. He's been giving me some deals on Pokemon lately. So we'll shout out to TGG Gaming, Terrence. Uh, they gave me some sleeves that I didn't use, except for playtesting, because they were ugly brown. But that's okay. <laughs> um, shout out to Rising Star. Shout out to Metamat, Metamats. Shouting to, shout out to uh, Deadly. Shout out to DB Grinder. YGO Daily. 
Uh, shout out to my wife, Montana. Shout out to Izzy, because Izzy's the best cat in the world. I need an Izzy Field Center, guys. Um, shout out to my teammates. Uh, Caleb, who my carried. Soul, <laughs> Caleb, in nine rounds, went eight and one. Eight and one. He two owed everybody except for one person in Swiss. It was insane. Uh, shout out to Joe for scraping people with Linda. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> 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 Two days. <laughs> Uh, Alistair Dodak, baby. Uh, shout out to Walter for giving me cards. Shout out to Jose for buying me trash cans. And, uh, <laughs> shout out, shout out to the entire team for swearing that they're gonna impeach me as captain and all do better than me on Saturday. And I was the only one who tops. So I keep the band. The band stays home. Let's go. That's all. Thanks, guys. All right. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? This is Midwest Gaming, and today we're here with. Caleb and I use. Oh, oh. And we got uh, second um, in the 3v3. In, undefeated in Swiss, uh, lost in the final. So, and I played uh, Tennis Hard Soul. Deck was crazy. So, let's get right into it. Uh, for the Sword Souls, it's pretty standard. I played three Oye, oh, yeah, three Long Gun, uh, three Ecclesia, and then the two Tai. I played two of these because it's just not the best one. It's better in this deck because you have the Tennis that banish two. But just playing two for Desires because it comes up sometimes. So. Pretty standard. Uh, 11 of those guys. And then the Tenyis. Play three Ashna. Special deck. Card's insane. Two Bishuda. Card's crazy going second. And then the two Ahara. I played two of these because of Desires again. Um, and it's good to um, cycle your resources. Oh. And then today I decided to main deck Protoss. Card's insane. If you can search it going first, calling Dark is always good. Always. And then if you're going second, you can break a board, search it. And then just call whatever they have left to seal up the game. So, uh, for hand traps, I played three Valor, three Ash, and then three Imperm. Uh, I decided to play these because I think they're good against mostly everything. Um, and then Ash is a level three tuner, which works well with the level sevens to make the synchro tens. Um, and then Valor's a level one tuner, which is also good with the sevens to make uh, synchro eights. So, super good today. I was playing Droplet the other day, and I didn't really like it, so I'm glad I played this today. Did you miss Nibiru at all? Um, not really. I played it in the side deck, which was good, and then it just conflicts with the uh, Tenny cards a little bit, so I decided to side deck it, and then you can side some of these out when you're doing that, but um, it was decent. I didn't miss it in the main deck, so. 49, 28. And then for the spells, consistent cards, the emergence, cards are just Protoss, it's insane. And then three desires, since you're not playing the DPE stuff and you're playing like threes and twos of everything else, card's super good. Um, and then I didn't really want to play this card, but it was decent. I played two Vessel. It's really good with the Tenny stuff. Um, and then if you have like Tai, you can send other stuff and then revive it with Baxia to keep playing. So it's decent. Sided a lot, out a lot going second. So, And then the one Reborn, it comes up sometimes. So I played two Blackout. Uh, unlike the Travergate deck, it's good to draw, but like it doesn't keep get you follow up, so you only really want to search it when you want it. Um, it's cool to summon the token because that helps you do tenny stuff and then play through um, hand traps. But um, and then the one order, card insane. I feel like in this deck you can just play like main deck all your power cards, and then if you see them, you win the game. Where is it? So like these cards, so super good. Forty in the main deck, DB grinder, love to see it. <laughs> Would you play DPE at all in this deck, or you um, don't think it's worth it? Probably not. I think like the good thing about this deck is it's super consistent. Like between the all the starters you play and then all the tennies, it's super easy to make synchro sevens and tens, which I like. Um, and then keeping it at forty, you get to see all your side cards. I just wasn't a big fan of DPE. I feel like it doesn't um, uh, synergize with the deck super good, except for Ecclesia. But so I didn't really miss it. And then I guess we'll do extra deck. Two best sword soul tokens, plays a Kamehusaur, you know, yep. um, and then I played two monk with the shaman. Three never really ever came up with me, because even if you only start with a Shuna, you can special that, summon a monk, especially with Shuna, summon another monk, um, and other than that, um, usually you can keep cycling your tennies if you have uh, the sword soul token on the field, so two is fine. Um, I decided to play the shaman, it comes up sometimes when you have like Interesting hands, it didn't really come up today, but I'll keep playing it, it's pretty good. Uh, I played the one Yazi, 
you can either make it with a uh, long yun and then a sink or a uh, tuner one, either the Veiler or the Adhara. Uh, it's good going second because you can like pop cards and then summon your Sword Souls from deck. So uh, I played two backs, yeah. And the Tenny version is super good. You usually do one going first to do the Chaofeng combo. And then one comes one comes up on uh, turn three to like clear cards and then kill them. So cards are crazy. And I play two Chizo. I think it's pretty standard. You have one for turn one and then one for turn three again. So, um, and then I really didn't make these cards that often this weekend. The Dragite, the Blader, and the Berserker, but um, they're all pretty good. Moe is a water, so this can negate spells and traps. Uh, this is super good in the mirror match. Uh, against Invoked and Virtual World because you just attack over a monster and they can't really play the next turn. Um, and then this one comes up a lot when you're locked into Worms um, and going for game. So, And then for the Synchro Titans, Flare, of course. Um, Ruddy Rose. This card's super good. You can usually uh, play through boards and it's usually going second. You're going to clear their board and then some of these guys take away all their follow-up. That's usually how you get rid of um, Enforcer. You bait it, and then you just summon this guy to banish everything, and then they don't get to summon it back, of course. Um, and then the last Synchro 10 is a Chengying. I think this is one of like the best cards in the deck. It's super hard to out for a lot of decks, and it's like an FTK against like PK and Dragon Link and all that good stuff. So, And then Nib Token, because we get Nibbed all the time. <laughs> and then the side deck, six more hand traps. I decided to play Droll. I think it's pretty good into everything. It's decent in the mirror. It's really good against birds. Um, super good against Drytron. Sadly, I didn't see it today, but <clears throat> also another level one, so it's decent. And then the three in a beer. This card's crazy. I would think about maining it, but I just like the versatility of having the level one tuner in Effect Veiler, and then it conflicts a little bit with the uh, tennies. So, but these cards are all super good. And then, more going second cards. I decided to play three evenly. This was Storm um, during testing and then other days. But with all the anti-spell and like all the main deck orders, I think this was a lot better. You don't get to use your battle phase, but it's not too bad. Because you play stuff like uh, Fleur and Baxia to clear cards after the battle phase. Um, and then, it, like this is kind of a Lancia deck since you're playing like the Tennies and Tai. But if they're doing full combo and they have Lancia, they're just better than you. So. What do you usually side evenly against? Um, it's really good in the mirror match because they only usually have like one hard negate in the flare, which you can bait and then you can clear their whole board. Um, it's really good against PK because their grind game is good, but then if you evenly them, um, you can banish all the fog blades and all their PK monsters. And then I sided against Flunder today too because usually they have like a couple monsters, the field spell and the back row. Um, and there's not really anything they can do about this except for summon Avion, which is fine. So you play through that, and then you can just even win them. So super good. And then <laughs> the one reboot card was crazy today. I drew it exactly when I needed it. Um, going second against uh, the Bird Up deck, the only card I was really worried about was the Feather Storm. And I drew Dark Ruler plus the reboot. So card's crazy. Um, and it's the same thing as um evenly like you can set their cards and then back to shuffle them away or flare clear them so it's really not too hard to deal with those um and then i had two extra spots because i was playing protos and uh Rageki, i think the other day so i just decided to play two more going second cards dark ruler um i think this maybe should have been droplet because of all the anti-spell and the order but i don't really like droplet in this deck just because um, you want to have a bunch of cards in your hand for like the Moyes and the uh, and the Tennies and the Longyun. So I think um, this is better. You don't have to discard any cards, but it was decent. Drew it when I needed to. So, but I don't know if I'd keep playing it. Um, and the last three cards were three anti spell for going first. Um, I was mostly worried about mine, and then obviously like Dark Ruler and Droplet and Storm and all that good stuff. So just sided this going first because it hits all of them. Um, it's crazy. Do you want it today? I think every time I do this, I won the game. So between this and order, you have like four super good cards you can draw, um, and then between Moye and Desires, you're typically gonna see one. So, do you really have like true back row removal? Did you find that was okay or? Uh yeah, it was fine. To be honest, like all your cards bait back row. So like uh, Ashuna can summon Bashuda, which bounces the back row, um, and then Baxia if you're using. 
Taie or Moye, it's one or two shuffles. And then if you summon Fleur, it'll pop one and it can negate one. So it's usually not too bad because like, so if you're drawing playable, you're running through back row anyway. And then if you draw with evenly, you're pretty much gonna win the game. So it wasn't too bad. I like Lightning Storm just because there's versatility with destroying monsters and back row, but uh, between like anti-spell and order, I don't, I don't think you can really play that right now. So. Do you have any shout outs? Uh, yeah, shout out to Walter. He always lends me cards. This like whole deck is pretty much his. <laughs> uh, shout out to Brian and Joe today. We clean it up. Joe's busy. <laughs> <laughs> we clean it up. Uh, got a little unlucky in the finals, but we take those. Uh, shout out to the guys back home, Evan and Ben. Um, shout out to, of course, our sponsors, YJ Daily, PDG, all the good shops from Minnesota. So. All right. Thanks Sounds for checking good. us out. I'm just assuming. Hi guys, here with Midwest Gaming, and who do we have here? I'm Jody Trick, and I got second at the uh, Rocky Mountain Collectibles 3v3 team tournament. And I played uh, Invokes Dogmatica, which is a pretty cool deck. Uh, deck I've been playing for a while. I was thinking about playing Sword Soul, um, but I didn't know the deck very well. I knew how it worked, but not how to like play through boards, so I just played a deck I was like, really comfortable with. Uh, so for the monsters, you play three Ecclesia, one Flare, one Maximus. I was playing multiples with this for a while, but I wanted to fit more hand traps. Um, and some people are like playing cards in their extra deck to combat this, like uh, Cyber Dragon Nova and Macaba. So I thought it like wasn't as good. And obviously it's awful in the mirror and against like the Flunder decks. Um, so just the one. And then Flare, like Flare is really good. It's a free extender if you open it with Alistair. Um, and it allows you to attack over DPE, which is pretty cool. So you can play through that. Um, and then if you open like this and Alistair, it lets you make Verite, so you can make your own DPE, which is pretty neat. Uh, and it's a light, so you can use it as a material for Makaba. So you end on like this plus Alistair ends on uh, Makaba DPE, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then the three Alistair, obviously. Dasher and Celestia. Uh, this engine is really good in the deck. Drawing two is huge. Um, because you always run to power cards and all that. And then being able to special summon something from your hand is always pretty cool too. You can summon something uh, to use as a material to make Verte if you, or you already made Verte obviously, to make the link to Alistair Link um, or something else. Pretty cool. Uh, for the hand traps, for three Ash, three Niv, and three Imperm. Um, it was crazy the whole weekend. People didn't respect it game one and it like came up big. On my future match against Pack, uh, I made them three times in two games, which was, unfortunate but it won me the game obviously um it's also nice because it's a light and it's a material that you can use to make verte with which is very cool uh, ash is good you can normal summon it um outside of its you know utility of being a hand trap and make all mirage with it and all margin is secure gardener and then if you have like a clazy or a maximus your maximus will become live because you have an extra monster in the graveyard so that's pretty cool uh imperm was like pretty good nice to draw it as a sixth card to play through stuff um, it's important game one against the trap decks because you need a trap in your hand to negate with Makaba, so that's pretty important. Um, but yeah, nine hand traps, all pretty good cards. Did you find yourself leaving Imperm in hand uh, if you full comboed, or would you always set it in case they broke your board with all the board wipe decks going? Uh, I usually kept it in my hands. If I like ended on like DP and something else, like uh, like Tikaboo or like another set card like Punishment, I would keep it in my hand. So I could like make it live and play around those cards. Cool. Uh, for the spells, three meltdown, terraforming, uh, three nadir, called by, two invocation, three pot, three fusion destiny, and three droplet. So like, all these cards are really crazy, and that's what makes this deck really good. Like, these uh, twelve cards are absurd. These are pretty good, you know, these are the ones you have to play. This is really good against Troll, because that deck destroys you sometimes, or that card destroys you. Um, Fusion Destiny plus Meltdown is crazy. If you Fusion Destiny while you have Meltdown on the field, uh, they can't negate the activation, and then you can use the effect of DP on Summon, and they can't respond to it if you have Meltdown. So, really cool combo. Um, these cards don't really, like, conflict. If you open, like, Fusion Destiny plus Nadir, you just do this first. Uh, send app clone with this search schism so you have a material to make um window because both the materials for this are dark and then you can just normal summon the clazy and get punishment or flare so don't really conflict um opening these together is fine I don't really do anything different um yeah 
And that's it for the spells. And the last two cards are Punishment and Schism. Uh, Punishment's really good against the control decks. Obviously, you don't want to use it until you absolutely have to because of the restriction. Um, but it's a good card. And then Schism for window. So 40 cards in the main deck. Uh, for the extra, for the Invoke Fusions, Augities, Purr, Rage In, and two Makawa. Um, two came up like once. It doesn't come up very often. Essentially what will happen is like, you'll go first, and if you open like no Fusion Destiny and no way to Ecclesia, you just like end on the Makaba, hopefully your hand traps are enough, and then you're gonna normal summon Alistair, turn three, link the Alistair and Makaba into Verte, use Invocation and make the second Makaba to guarantee that your Verte effect goes through. So that was like the theory behind that. Uh, Augades is really good. It's really good this format, as you're able to like bait out the DPE, you can banish it uh, as a material for this, so that's pretty cool. And if you've meltdown, they can't respond to the pop on summon. Oh, uh, Perg is crazy. Um, you make it with All Mirage or with like an Ash or something. Um, but this like steals so many games, especially with like Droplet, like halving all the attack. If they have like maybe four cards on board and you have like the Alistair added back to your hand, this gets like 4,000 attack and does piercing and attacks everything. So this card's nuts. Uh, Ragin is like super necessary right now, not for the bird deck because. It plays a bunch of wins and it's also an absolute barrier statue. So you just like summon this on some and use its effect. They can't respond if you have meltdown and book the barrier statue. So pretty cool. I like Perg and Tusting too, because it beats PK even when they have the trap and grave. Yeah, exactly. It still just attacks over it. Doesn't yep. care when the card summoned. Uh for the links, I played Secure Gardener, All Mirage, Verte, and Invoked Link. Uh this card's absurd right now. It's like just so good. So you like normal summon Alistair, link into this, um, and they like, can't pop whatever you fusion summon and fuse another material, like something from your hand or something from your opponent's graveyard with DP. So it dodges DP, it dodges uh, the Sword Soul Trap, it dodges a lot of cool cards, and it makes it so your Alistair uh, turns into a graveyard material instead of like an on field material. So you can use it as links to like link climb into this. Uh, Verte is crazy, obviously, Fusion Destiny. Uh, Alistair Link, this card is like pretty subpar. I would definitely play a second Entis instead of this. Uh, the theory behind it is like if you don't open Alistair, um, you can like Fusion Destiny under it and search Invocation, or you can like Schism underneath it. Uh, if you don't know the effect that this thing does, is like if something's Fusion Summoned to a zone it points to, you discard a card and search Invocation. And since this is Alistair, it's like an Alistair monster, you can um, use it as Fusion Material uh, to fulfill the requirement to make an Evoked Fusion. So that's kind of cool, I guess, but it didn't really come up. Um, Entis, Titanic Clad, DPE, this card's really good. Um, like I said, two came up like a good amount of times. Um, so probably play two. This card is really good with Punishment and with Maximus, making it so your Maximus turns into not only a window, but also a negate, so it's pretty neat. And then obviously DPE, this card's crazy. Uh, for the Shadals, Construct, Window, App Clone, you never make this. This is just to like send off Nadir. Uh, Winda is Winda, and then Constructs. It like, you don't have anything to sign with it, so it doesn't really do much. Um, it's a light, so like you can like send their Lord if you play against a trap deck, but other than that, it doesn't really come up. It gets banished off pot a lot. Uh, it's nice because like, if there's not something you want to discard in your hands to add back Schism, you can just add it and discard it. If you like open Nadir. And then Maximus send this and Titanic Clad add back the season for free. So that's kind of cool. Um, for the side deck, uh, three, there can be only one. Um, this card got popped every time I flipped it this weekend. So that was cool. Um, but like in theory, it's really good because you play a whole bunch of different uh, monsters that are different types. Like this is a machine, Alistair's a spellcaster, this is a warrior. When does spellcaster, right? When does a spellcaster, yep. Uh, so that, like, can conflict in some cases, but most of the time, if you have window plus this, you're winning the game anyways. Um, but yeah, it got popped a lot, so I don't really know. But it's good against the Sword Soul deck, the Flunder deck, uh, the PK deck, most of the time. It's like... Not horrible against Tri Brigade. Yeah, right. Bird deck, all that good stuff, so... Uh, three, evenly. This is for Trap decks and for PK if they Scythe you. Uh, this deck has a really hard matchup against like trap decks, so you want as many uh, multiple coverage cards as possible. So, I like this card a lot. Uh, I played two twin, 
and Duster. Uh, originally, it was Storm, but uh, I wanted to respect Order and Anti-Spell, because there's a lot of people with side decks. Uh, shout out to Mount Fuji for not respecting Order, the one of. Um, and this was for mine. Um, the theory behind this was like, if you play Storm, you have to like set your own monster and then like Storm and like hope to kill them. Whereas like Duster, I can draw this at any point in the game if I get mines, blow it all their sets and then kill them. Um, so really liked this card. Did you have an out to mine in your main deck? No, I didn't. I put them on better have it, so. Sometimes you just have to. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm not gonna make my main deck worse. Um, I thought about just playing the one Duster in my main deck, but. Don't wanna see it game one going first. Worth it. And we were never playing 41 anyways, so. Yeah. And last card, or there's two more cards, I'm sorry. Uh, Dark Ruler. Uh, this card is good against like Sword Soul and like Drytron and all that stuff. Um, yeah, not much to say about that. And the last card uh, is Droll and Lockbird. And I gave my set of Drolls to BDB Grinder to use for this weekend. And I didn't think I was going to play it. So I used uh, Friends for this weekend. I had to give them back to him. Um, but yeah, that was it. Uh, shout outs to YGO Daily, uh, best sponsor. They're insane. Check them out, ygodaily.com. Uh, shout out to MetaMats and check us out on Facebook and at YouTube and sub to the DB Grinder. Thanks.